Would you take magic mushrooms to treat your ADHD? In honor of Bicycle Day, the day the LSD was first discovered, I wanted to explore a question that is near and dear to my heart. Could psychedelics be a viable treatment for ADHD? Like countless other people, I believe that psychedelics have played a huge role in my mental and emotional well-being. Though I'm not a doctor or a scientist, I've nerded out plenty about the workings of the mind, especially in relation to ADHD and altered states of consciousness. In my reading, I was pretty surprised to see a lot of overlap between these two fields of study. Now, I haven't seen a lot of research about ADHD and psychedelics together, but between ADHD research and psychedelic research, there's a lot of common ground and overlap. In this video, I'd like to share three major areas where this overlap exists and share some of my own experiences with ADHD and psychedelics. This is not medical advice, and while I will be citing some scientific studies, this overlap is not scientifically conclusive. But it's my sincere hope that in the years to come, researchers thoroughly explore this area. The first interesting connection is related to a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is one of the greatest gifts our ancestors ever gave us. It is a part of the mind that is actually quite unique in humans, and it is responsible for the things we call executive functions. Executive functions include things like memory, goal-oriented behavior, memory, uh, <laughs> time perception, focus, and impulse inhibition. So what's the connection between ADHD and the prefrontal cortex? Well, people with ADHD, it appears, have a slower developing prefrontal cortex or a less developed prefrontal cortex. So all these executive functions are exactly the things we struggle with most. And how about the connection with psychedelics? According to a study published on Cell.com in July of 2021, just a single large dose of psilocybin showed rapid and persistent growth of neurons in the prefrontal cortex of mice. This growth was shown to persist at least a month after study. Now experientially, it's hard to confirm whether or not I've grown neurons in my prefrontal cortex, but there is an example of a time when I took psychedelic mushrooms and my executive function, my impulse inhibition around food changed forever. So this one time, I was eating pierogies, which are a kind of a Ukrainian Polish dumpling, and I was high on magic mushrooms. And as I felt this dough and paste of potatoes fold around the creases of my teeth, I said to myself out loud, I am assimilating this with my body. And in an instant, I visualized my fingernails, my hair, my brain cells all becoming these pierogies. And then I visualized the pierogies, and I visualized thousands of trucks on thousands of acres of farm harvesting these giant monocrops of potatoes and grains and going to big factories where they're chewed up and packaged. And I thought, that's not me. That's not who I want to be. I really understood in that moment the old maxim, you are what you eat. I felt it. And I didn't want to be fast, cheap, and easy. I didn't want to be a mass-produced commodity. And I immediately shifted my dietary priorities from convenience to quality. I went from sidekicks and frozen pierogies to farmer's market and homegrown vegetables almost immediately. This totally and permanently changed my ability to control my impulses around junk food, which I understand is quite a challenge for a lot of people with ADHD, because junk food lights up the parts of our brains that we crave to have stimulated. The second big connection is related to something called the default mode network. The default mode network is kind of our brain's autopilot mode. It helps us do the routine tasks we have to do every day efficiently without overthinking every step of the process and overwhelming ourselves. It's often associated with internal dialogue or narration. It's related with daydreaming and past and future thinking. And it helps us synthesize interesting connections in the mind. Unfortunately, at the worst of times, it's also responsible for incredible rumination, negative thought loops that might spiral out of control and emerge when you don't even notice. This contrasts to the brain network called the task positive network. The task positive network is the part of the brain that's activated when we're doing things, when we're actively engaged in a task, like I am right now. According to the esteemed doctors, Dr. Hallowell and Dr. Rady in their book, ADHD 2.0, in neurotypical people, these two networks act in a sort of seesaw fashion, 
When the default mode network is turned on for someone, the task positive network is turned off. And when the task positive network turns on, the default mode network turns off. Seesaw. That's for normal people. For ADHD people, this seesaw seems to be broken. When we shift into task positive, our default mode network sometimes keeps running and won't turn off. After a lifetime of moments of shame, failure, and embarrassment, this can lead ADHD people to be prone to gloomy thoughts and negative rumination. It can cause mood swings and an unhelpful degree of self-criticism. It's part of why we are likely to abandon projects that we started with incredible enthusiasm and vigor. It's one of the reasons we make careless mistakes. The default mode network could be a whole video series unto itself. And so where do psychedelics come in? There are multiple studies about LSD and psilocybin that show when these chemicals are ingested, our default mode networks are turned down. And so why might this be helpful for treatment? The best metaphor I've heard is that our thoughts are kind of like tracks in a snow. The more we walk in these tracks, the easier it gets to walk in these tracks. And you might walk and walk and walk, and it becomes hard to create new paths. This is our default mode network. It's the paths that are entrenched in our thoughts that are easily accessed. When we take a psychedelic, it's like a fresh coat of snow covers the landscape and makes new paths more accessible. So how has this showed up in my life? An example that comes to mind is dancing. For many years, I was very insecure about dancing. I wanted to do it, but I just couldn't get myself to shake my body. It felt weird. I was very insecure. It felt like every party I went to, I got more insecure. It didn't get easier. Until one time, I went to this amazing party in the woods called Shambhala with a bunch of silly costumes and music that was made exclusively for dancing. And I took some psilocybin mushrooms and I could feel all these insecurities melting away. Dancing became easy. And it wasn't just easy for that weekend. When I left the party, I could dance anywhere, anytime and have fun doing it. My insecurities melted. I rewired that part of my mind. It was like I was making fresh tracks in the snow. The last connection I want to make between ADHD and psychedelics is this wonderful thing called treatment-resistant depression. According to research that was presented at the Anxiety and Depression Association of America in 2016, a lot of cases of treatment-resistant depression are actually undiagnosed ADHD. And as the moderator of an ADHD men's group with upwards of 8,000 members, I often hear stories of people who were misdiagnosed and treated for depression for years with no positive effect, often harmed by the medication that was supposed to be helping them. In a recent groundbreaking study done at multiple locations, including Columbia University and the New York State Psychiatric Institute, a single dose of psilocybin with psychiatric support showed incredible reduction of depressive symptoms. And this was no microdose. The study found that the participants who were given the largest dose of psilocybin had the steepest reduction in depression symptoms. At the three-week mark, many of them reported a rapid remission of depression symptoms that was sustained for at least three months. Again, I think there's no one way we could explain how this works, but I think a big part of it is gratitude. I found after large doses of psilocybin, I became grateful for everything, every minute detail of consciousness and life. The colors on trees and leaves, the details and textures and fabrics, the ability to communicate with words, for me to share knowledge with you. That's amazing. And it's something we can take for granted all the time. I find when I'm grateful for all the simple and daily mundane things in my life, it's really hard to be depressed. So what do you think? Have psychedelics helped or harmed your mental health? Is this a topic you'd like me to explore more? And obviously, psychedelics are a choice. They come with legal and medical risks. You should absolutely do plenty of research before committing to what could be a life-changing experience. Happy Bicycle Day.